So if you're ever looking to budget entry points to direct drive wheels, you may have come across the FFBeast project. FFBeast uses an old hoverboard motor to produce a wheel that produces up to 15 newton meters of force feedback, which is actually quite a bit of force feedback. If you want to get a wheelbase that produces this much force feedback, you're probably going to look around 600 to 1000 bucks. So I've been recently getting into sim racing, so I've been looking for a wheel. Uh, specifically, I wanted one with direct drive. Uh, so since I'm a type of guy that likes to save a buck, and also I really like making things, uh, this really stood out to me. When I looked at all the tutorials, uh, it also seemed pretty easy to do. Uh, but uh, from my experience, uh, it wasn't. Uh, and I'll tell you why. And I'll also give you some tips that maybe make it a little easier to do uh, if you guys want to attempt the same thing. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into the video. So first, let's get into the upsides and downsides of building something like this to see if you would like to build this. So the first upside and probably the most compelling one is the price. As I said before, it's a lot cheaper than something of the similar caliber. Also, if the thing breaks, uh, you'll almost always be able to fix it because there's not too many parts. Uh, so you'll pretty much always be able to just redo the stuff you were doing when you built it and then fix it up. Whereas on a normal wheelbase, you may have to send it in and if you're at past your warranty, uh, you may just be toast. Finally, if you just like building things, it's a really cool project. And uh, if you just want to build something, I highly recommend it. Okay, now let's get into the downsides. So uh, first, it's pretty janky. Uh, right now, it's not in its complete form uh, because I didn't get to actually finish like the casing and all that uh, before I went in for break. I'm in break right now. That's why I have these really janky clamps. But yeah, it's definitely not going to be as polished of an experience as the uh, pre-built options that you'll get from Moza, Fanatec, and uh, companies like that. Also, that ties into this not being part of any ecosystem. So with our big name brands like uh, Moza and Fanatec, they're usually going to have a kind of hub on the back where you can connect up pedals, a uh, handbrake, a shifter, and things like that so that it all works cohesively and you just need one plug to plug the entire system in. And that really helps with cable management and just getting the whole thing to work together. Uh, but in this case, you don't get any ecosystem. So uh, you build this and it's, it's just this. There's no pedals to go along with it or anything like that. You can build pedals to go along with it, but I mean, that's kind of up to you at that point. And uh, I also gets onto the second point of pretty much everything is up to you, uh, especially when it comes to the wheel, um, like the not not the wheel base, but the actual wheel itself, you're going to have to build the entire wheel too. There's nothing that you can just buy off the shelf that's going to uh, have all the buttons and the shifter uh, or like the paddle shifters and stuff like that. That's all on you. So just know that you're not just building the wheel base. You also are then committing to build every other part uh, involving the wheel base after that too. Even though I said that the price was in the pros category for this, uh, it's also kind of a con if you're just looking for an entry level uh, direct drive wheel. Um, it's definitely priced in the same category since if you get this uh, for about 200 bucks all in and then that uh, the pedals for around 150, uh, give or take, you're going to be spending about 350 bucks for the entire setup. That gets you into territory of entry level direct drive wheels already, especially with new entries like the PXN, uh, VD4, VD6, or V10. Uh, you can definitely get something with a lot more polish for around the same price. So I'd say if you're not uh, dead set on having a very powerful wheel and you're not very hot on actually building it yourself, I'd say just go with um, one of those other options because uh, that way, you know, you aren't locked into this ecosystem where you have to build everything yourself if that's not your thing. Now, that being said, I can uh, simulate a lot more cars than those ones do because of the high force feedback of 15 Newton meters with this. That way I can simulate F1 cars, GT3 cars, anything without power steering. As I said, I'm a beginner in this hobby, but I can trust that this wheel will grow with me because uh, it can actually provide all of the force feedback needs that I'll have in the future. Maybe in the future, if I outgrow this wheel or if uh, I want something more cohesive, since I just got these Moza CRP2 pedals, uh, thanks Rohan, uh, my brother-in-law, 
maybe then I'll upgrade to a high-end Moza wheel with uh, all of the other accessories that go along with it. But I'd say for now and the foreseeable future, uh, I think this wheel will do me just fine. The next issue, which is kind of an issue, kind of not an issue, is that you're pretty much going to need to build a sim cockpit as well with this. Uh, you'll see on other uh, FF Beast videos that people have made table clamps that work, but just know this is a 15 newton meter uh, wheelbase and it will produce a lot of torque and it will rattle itself off uh, pretty much any table clamp you make. I wouldn't say this is that much of an issue though. Uh, I just say that uh, just know if you're getting a high force feedback wheel, uh, you're gonna need the stuff that goes along with the high force feedback wheel. But I'd say that uh, if with those upsides and downsides in mind, if you still want to build this, uh, go for it. I think it's, it's a great project. So before I get into part selection and issues that I came across while building this thing, uh, let me get into just how this thing works at a very general level. So for the actual wheelbase, uh, the components are pretty simple. We have a uh, motor from a hoverboard. We have a magnetic encoder back here. We have a motor controller that connects up to the PC through a USB-C cable. And we have um, uh, the braking resistor that also connects to it. And then over here, we are connected to a uh, power supply that powers the whole thing. Uh, and this one here is a 600 watt uh, power supply, which is uh, 25 amp, 24 volt, something like that. Uh, but yeah, we'll get into which one of these you should pick later. So the way that this works is that this motor is powered uh, through these three cables right here that go in through the shaft, um, and that powers this. But the thing is, uh, that doesn't handle any of the rotation of this. So uh, if I just had these three cables, there'd be no way for the computer to tell where this thing is actually rotated. So to do that, you need to have an encoder to show actually the rotation of the wheel. And the way we translate this rotation all the way back here is that we have a little bike spoke that is connected to the center of here. And then that bike spoke goes all the way along here. And then let's see if we can see this. You see there's a, a little 3D print here that houses a little magnet and that's connected to the bike spoke, which is rotating. You can see that little uh, 3D print is rotating along with the wheel. And that rotates this magnet in front of this magnetic encoder. And there, uh, and by doing that, it can uh, actually uh, translate that rotation to this, um, this motor controller, which has all the firmware, which then gets piped into the computer. And then it, uh, it, gets, uh, it gets translated as a wheel. And you can see, it works like that. So the FF Beast project actually has a pretty good wiki uh, that'll show you which parts to select. Uh, but I'm gonna just give my two cents uh, to make your process easier with selecting these. So firstly, for the motor selection, any hoverboard motor will work. However, based on the length of your stator, which is this part right here, um, you will get different force feedback, uh, 30 mil, uh, will give you the 15 newton meters, uh, and then anything less will give you uh, closer to 10. It's kind of a luck of the draw, but you can figure out what the stator length will be uh, based on the weight of the motor. I lucked out with a 30 mil stator uh, on this free hoverboard that I got, um, but the one issue is that it has all these annoying grooves in it, so when I had to uh, drill these holes to um, attach this wheel, uh, it was a huge pain. Uh, and even using a drill press, it was a pain. Uh, so one thing, definitely use a drill press if you're ever going to be drilling through metal. It saves so much time. For the controller, you can pretty much just get whatever's cheapest uh, that the FF Beast wiki uh, recommends. For me, I got the single access Odesk uh, 4.2 by Makerspace 3D, uh, but you can get anything that it recommends. The wiki has some uh, two access motor controllers that are more expensive, but no, that's mostly just for the uh, flight control stick that they have because you need two, two motors there uh, and we don't need that. So we can just get the cheaper version for our use case. So the biggest thing that I wanted to say uh, is the encoder situation for this. Uh, do not go with 
the setup that I have. Uh, it's not good. So what I have, uh, as I said before, is a boat is a bike spoke going through the center of the motor, uh, through all of the uh, shaft of the motor, uh, and then translating that all the way to this encoder at the back. Um, there's so many issues with this. It says on the website too, that if you don't think you can align that encoder properly, then just don't go with it. And I completely agree. Aligning the magnet to the encoder was definitely the most annoying part of this project. First of all, they use a really weird bearing, uh, and I didn't realize that, so I had to reprint all of my stuff uh, to get the to use the standard skateboard bearing. I'll leave uh, my STLs in the comments. And and if this encoder falls any bit, then this thing will just start spinning uncontrollably, which is really scary and annoying. And to top that all off, uh, this bike spoke is also constantly rubbing on these three wires because it's going through the center of the shaft, which these uh, wires also run along. So this metal thing is just constantly spinning around it, which uh, I really hope it doesn't fail, but it has a chance of just rubbing through and shorting out the wires, meaning I'll have to take the whole thing apart, uh, cut the wires off, solder on new ones, uh, which would be annoying. Oh yeah, and I forgot the worst part. You have to pass the bike spoke through the motor shaft, uh, which is not actually hollow. It's hollow like halfway, but you have to basically drill through an inch of hardened steel uh, to pass this bike stroke through. And I first tried to do it freehand without a drill press, and I broke a bit inside of it, which made me have to throw away the entire stator of one motor and start all over again. I'm pretty sure that mounting the encoder in this way literally doubled or tripled the amount of time I had to uh, do this project. So uh, if you can't tell, uh, I really regret it and I, I hate it. So the thing is, this is technically the cheapest option because it's like four bucks for the encoder and then like you can get the bike spoke for free. I got the bike spoke for free. You can probably do the same by just going to a bike shop. Um, but it was totally not worth it because the other option going with the Omron style uh, encoder, uh, it's like 12 bucks on uh, AliExpress. So it's like pretty much the same price uh, and it's way more reliable and you won't get any of these issues. I've also seen alternative uh, ways to mount the magnetic encoder. I think it's called the, the V mounting. I'll link that as well. Um, and that seems to be a little more reliable because there's uh, no sort of drill, drilling through the shaft of the, um, of the motor. Um, I haven't used it though, so I can't uh, really say how reliable or good it is. Uh, it just looks a little better and it looks a little cleaner. Uh, it, the way it works is that um, instead of translating it through the shaft, uh, you drill a hole in the front of the motor casing and then you have uh, your encoder at the front uh, that's static connected to the shaft and then on the outside front of this casing you have the magnet that spins around. Um, that seems just like a little more reliable uh, and a little more static as well. Uh, so I'd go with that if you really want to go with the magnetic encoder. Uh, just know that that needs a smaller encoder. So, uh, you know, just follow those tutorials if you're doing that. And then finally for the power supply, uh, all you really need to know is that you need at least 300 watts of power to fully max out this motor uh, at 100%. That being said, I've never maxed it out to 100% because I'm mounting it like this. Uh, until I get back to school. So that equates to a 15 watt, uh, uh, so that equates to a 15 amp, 20 watt power supply. The thing is, if you're getting like a low quality random power supply, uh, I would recommend getting a uh, higher wattage one. Uh, usually people on the on the FFB's Discord say to get a 20 amp, 20 volt power supply, uh, which is a 400 watt power supply. I went super paranoid with this because it's high amperage stuff, uh, so I didn't want it to just you know burn down my entire house. Uh, so I went with pretty overkill. I got a 600 watt uh, unit with I think 25 amp, 25 volt, something like that. I'll link it as well. Uh, but that's a Meanwell unit as well. Meanwell is kind of the gold standard for switching power supplies. 
You can also get away with using two Dell uh, laptop chargers. And then there's like another thing on the FFBeast wiki that allows you to combine them together. Uh, and you can do that as well if you want a little more of a, uh, you know, enclosed, like already done system that you don't have to, you know, splice wires or anything to do. Uh, which I'd recommend if, if you want to do that because it definitely seems a little less sketchy than what I did. <laughs> But yeah, I think uh, that's pretty much it for my review of this thing. I'm not a very pro sim racer or anything like that, so I can't really attest to how good it feels other than I've tried some other uh, some other uh, direct drive wheels. This is definitely stronger than those, uh, and it feels, I'd say, uh, the same, if not uh, better uh, than those because, you know, you get those real, like, powerful spikes uh um, when you, you know, hit something or if you're going over something, it, it's very, it feels very detailed. Um, so yeah, I'd say, uh, I think, yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, and I'll probably just show some gameplay footage of it in progress and yeah, thank you. See you.